What's well, everybody? My name is Scott Waters. Welcome to Let's Metal. It's time for a Rock Metal Update. That's right. Time for a Rock and Metal Update. It's been a while since I've done an update. Uh, just been out of town quite a bit. Was out in Georgia visiting my buddy Steve, Harmless Rebel, on, on YouTube uh, for several days. And I came home and worked my butt off so that I could get a bunch of stuff out before I left for vacation with my wife. We went to Disneyland in California for a week, just me and her. We had a good time, enjoyed ourselves. Came back, we were home for just a few days again, and we took off again uh, to the mountains of Williams for Thanksgiving weekend. So we've been gone a lot, so that's the reason you haven't seen me much. But uh, regardless, I'm back. I've got lots of videos planned in the future, so let's get right into this. Uh, mostly vinyl, 12 inch vinyl, a couple CDs that I want to show, but what's playing in the background, this is uh, the demos by Morgoth and Satan's Arrival. Satan's Arrival demo is on side B, which is what's playing now. It's a 1984 demo. Uh, the kids, these were kids, literally, according to the liner notes, uh, like in their 14 and 15 year old kids uh, playing this stuff. So if you can hear it, I'm really impressed. It's really good. I really quite enjoy it. But I, I kind of like this sound. It kind of has that new wave British heavy metal sound. And this band was from the Netherlands. So, um, and Morgoth uh, is on the A side, a little different, but not much. Still very much in the, um, you know, the standard traditional heavy metal style. Uh, both bands are pretty much the same guys. It's just they changed their name. Uh, and then apparently after the '86 demo, the Morgoth demo, the band was fighting so much that they uh, they ended up breaking up. And, and several of the guys in, in the band ended up forming uh, a thrash band called uh, what was it? Thrash band called Deafen. Um, so there you go. Comes with a nice insert. Sounds great. So if you're into obscure, you know, heavy metal from the early '80s, check out Morgoth and Satan's Arrival demo. Uh, Available now. It's only 200 vinyl copies pressed. This one is number uh, 61 or 200. It's also available on CD. Okay, I'm gonna get right into this uh, CDs first. Let's get those out of the way. First, we got Vindicator. This is the brand new album from Vindicator. Um, I showed in a video not too long ago their Thrash and Demolished uh, compilation, which was all their early demos, which I've also really enjoy. But this is a brand new album from them. Now this one actually is. I mean, their early stuff was almost black and thrash. Uh, then they just went straight forward thrash. This one here actually is it, thrash, but at times it pushes more towards like a U.S. power metal sound, like uh, like Metal Church or um, Reverend or uh, you know that kind of sound. Um, I mean, most people would even call those bands thrash. So, but it, it's just. I don't know how to explain it. It's just not all speed all the time. It's not speed for speed's sake. Uh, it's just solid heavy metal. So Vindicator, this is um, Communal Decay. Cool album cover. Um, kind of hoping that this will make its way to vinyl eventually. Vindicator, you can pick this up on the Vindicator band camp, band camp, uh, camp page. I also have copies at nolightsmetalrecords.com if anybody's interested. Um, Exodus, New Exodus, Persona Non Grata. Um, I've only heard it twice. It sounded great. Production was great. It's pretty much, you know, standard fare for what you expect from Exodus. I actually think it's better um, than the last couple albums, although I like those too. Um, however, I haven't really digested it yet. I need to give it a few more spins. I need to look into the lyrics a little bit too, because um, sometimes they can be pretty uh, anti-Christian, which irritates me. Uh, There's an interesting song title on here called uh, Lunatic Liar or Lord, which uh, I believe is from C.S. Lewis's book, Mere Christianity, so I'm kind of curious what that song is about. Regardless, Exodus, Persona Non Grata, uh, thrash metal, exactly what you ex expect from you know Exodus. Those guys are still putting out great music. Okay, now we're going to get into the vinyl. Uh, this is just... I don't want to call it a grail. It's just one that I had when it was new. Uh, I've, I've told you guys before that I sold my whole collection in 1990, um, and I've, you know, gotten most of it back that I had. Um, but there's a few things that have just gotten by that I haven't been able to find, uh, and this one just always seems to sell for way too much money for an EP. Um, but thankfully, my good friend Rob Caldwell hooked me up with a copy of Jump in the Fire, Metallica. I love the first three Metallica, especially the first two. I mean, when, when, I, when I'm in the mood to hear Metallica, I'm pretty much gonna, you know, pull any of the first two, so, <laughs> uh, first, uh, and then and then go from there, so. Uh, but anyhow, this has got uh, Jump in the Fire on the A side. This is a UK uh, release on uh, Music for Nations, I believe, and it has live versions of Seek and Destroy and Phantom Lord on the backside. I don't know how live they are. I don't know if they were just 
recorded in the studio, but they're definitely different than this than the uh, the regular Kill 'Em All versions. But I always like the back cover photos and just a cool, you know, collection completion thing. Uh, I don't collect everything Metallica these days, but the early stuff I do. So I'm glad to have finally have that back in the collection. All right, we got a little bit of everything in here: old stuff, new stuff, reissues, original pressings. Um, this one I showed in my last video and I'm showing it again because in that video I think I told you all that the, the, the copy came destroyed, uh, very warped, unplayable. The company that I uh, purchased this from was very quick to replace it. I had a new copy before I was even able to send the old copy back. So no complaints there and now I have a copy that's in perfect shape. This is number 112 of 400, 400 copies pressed. So if you're interested in this uh, Speed Metal Thrash Gem, think of this by Toxic. Uh, jump on it quick because it won't—they won't be around long. Phoenix, heavy metal thrash band, Flotsam and Jetsam. This is unnatural selection. This is a limited pressing of 500 on um, uh, Night of the Night of the Vinyl Dead. Uh, it's on a kind of a cool color vinyl. I don't usually, you know, care all that much about the color vinyl, but this one's kind of cool. Uh, it matches the front cover very well. That's. I do kind of like that, so there, it's a splatter vinyl, but as you can see, it, it, it actually goes pretty well with the front cover. Um, so very cool, this was finally on vinyl. Um, this is a really fast, thrashy album for um, for Flotsam. I mean, Flotsam's been kind of all over the place musically, but this is definitely one of their thrashier albums. Um, doesn't matter to me, I, I like the whole Flotsam catalog so far. So. Alright, this is a, uh, a Walmart pickup. My uh, daughter called me. She was at Walmart. She goes, Dad, do you, you know, do you need this? And I'm like, yeah. So she grabbed it for me. So this is Jimi Hendrix Experience. This is um, live at the Atlanta Pop Festival. Uh, was it 1970, I believe it was. But anyhow, uh, a very it's like a $20 record. $19.99, I think, is what it, it's selling it for. Um, anything Hendrix is welcome in my collection. I've been a Hendrix fan since I was a kid, and, and I still continue to be a fan. So if you're into, you know, Hendrix and, and you're in a Walmart, keep an eye out for that one. It's, it's kind of, I like the cover art as well. This too has color, colored vinyl. Again, matches the cover, sort of. You would think it would be black, blue, and red. It's actually white, blue, and red, but it's still kind of cool. Um, it's not a splatter, it's kind of more of a, a, a marbling effect. And it's, it's pretty subtle. It's not real. Like the Flotsam one where, where it was really, you know, striking. But still really cool vinyl. Great album, of course. It's anything Jimi Hendrix is great. <laughs> um, Hendrix was an innovator, in my opinion. I know some people don't like him. And say he was a sloppy player and all this and that. But he was an innovator. And uh, I think even, even at his sloppiest, it was just something about his style and his playing that I enjoyed. So, Okay, next up. This next batch is all the same band. I've got three here from the same band. This is uh, Motorhead live in Berlin. This is the brand new release for 2022. This is an official release. Um, this was recorded in, let's see if I can remember the year. I should look these things up before I start the video, but I, I never do. Um, 2012. Here's the uh, inner gatefold. It is just black vinyl. If I can get one of these out of here, you can see it. There you go, black vinyl. I, I did put these in, in the sleeves, but it did also come with picture sleeves. Uh, got some nice pictures of the band. They are black and white. But still, louder than lo louder than noise. Live in Berlin, Phil Campbell, Mickey D, and Lemmy Kilmister. Uh, it, it does. If it was a bootleg, if it doesn't matter what it is, and if it's Motorhead, I'm grabbing it. <laughs> I'm just a Motorhead fanatic. I have been, again, since I've been in high school. Um, so this and the sound quality on this is great. Um, this is back in 2012. Lemmy wasn't sick yet, and he sounds, you know, healthy. And, and uh, this is it's a really good recording. It's got some songs in here you don't hear quite a bit. Um, songs like uh, Dr. Rock um, and Rocket, um, Going to Brazil, and just, you know, other songs on here you hear all the time, like obviously Overkill, Ace of Spade, Killed by Death, Metropolis, Stay Clean, Damage Case, those are all more ones that you hear all the time, but nice mix for 2012, glad to have this in the collection. Motorhead, Louder Than Noise, Live in Berlin. This is the other official release for this year, this is the uh, Everything Louder Forever, the 3 LP set. This thing is a monster. Uh, it's so fat. I, don't, I can't even find a sleeve for it to fit in, so I got it in the, still in the shrink wrap. Uh, it basically is a fold-out poster, and all the records are folded into the poster. 
I'm, I just don't want to pull the thing apart. It's just, you can go online and look at the, at the, uh, how it opens up, but it's basically a best of Motorhead over the years. I mean, you've got, and it's not in any sort of chronological order, which I, I kind of wish it was, because it starts off with Overkill and then goes right into We Are Motorhead, uh, and then Snaggletooth, Rocket, and Orgasmatron. So right there, you've got like three decades of music on, on side A. Uh, Brotherhood of Man, uh, In the Name of Tragedy, Bomber, Sacrifice, The Thousand Names of God, Love for Sale, Killed by Death, I'm So Bad, Maybe I Don't Care, Smiling Like a Killer, uh, Sh Sharpshooter, Queen of the Damned, Keys to the Kingdom, Cradle to the Grave, Lost Johnny, um, the, the Game, Ace of Spades, Burner, uh, Stone Dead Forever, Bad Woman, Just Cause You Got That Power, Stay Out of Jail, No Class, I Am the Sword, The Chase is Better Than the Catch, a lot of songs, <laughs> God Save the Queen, R-E-M-O-N-E-S, uh, Iron Fist, Rock Out, um, Dirty Love, Shine, Overnight Sensation, On Your Feet or On Your Knees, I Ain't No Nice Guy, Sucker, 1916, Choking On Your Screams, and it ends with Motorhead, so there you go. Really nice package. Um, mine does have a slight crease in the corner up here, unfortunately. It happened in the mail. Eh, it just is what it is. I'm, I'm <laughs> whatever. But uh, if you're a Motorhead fanatic, worth worth picking that one up. It, it's not real expensive. I'm sure it'll go up in price over time. Um, it was pretty inexpensive for a uh, a three disc set, three LP set. And this next one is a is a bootleg. Usually do separate, you know, bootleg videos, but. I've got a bunch of live albums in here, so I just figured I'd just show them all together, but this is Motorhead, um, live in Minneapolis, 1985, the name of the album, I cannot remember for the life of me, <laughs> this, I really like this, it's a nice package, um, it's got a, you know, OB strip, as you can see, Bear Breast Boogie 85, that's the name of the album, it's got a, um, a poster of the cover, which it's a, it's a cool illustration of Lemmy. Two LP set. Uh, you've got one green album, one black album. No center labels, they're just white. And then uh, this gigantic 24 by 24 inch poster of the cover. So it's a nice package, but as usual with bootlegs, there's, there's something to complain about. <laughs> Um, it's it's the uh, there's no track listing on here. There's there's nothing on the center labels. There's nothing on the back cover. It doesn't tell you what the track listings are. And the, the back cover is actually a, a bunch of pictures of naked breasts. With, so I'm not going to show that on the video. But um, yeah, that's unfortunate. I, I, don't, I just don't understand why we not put the tracks of the songs on the packaging or even on the back of the OB slip. As you can see, there's nothing there. So weird, but doesn't matter it's motorhead it's in my collection and i'm glad to have it okay these next couple are high roller reissues um this first one is by american heavy metal band the rods uh new this is a band i've been into since early 80s they were an east coast band and i lived in the east coast so they were really popular locally um this was their first um i believe it was an independent release and uh then of course they were signed by arista records major label and they I, think, I believe they re-recorded the whole album and it was just called The Rods. Uh, this I, album, I believe, has a couple songs that weren't on the first album, you know, the first official album. I haven't actually spent enough time to compare it and everything, um, but regardless, this, uh, this package is really nice. High Roller always does a good job. Um, my only complaint is is that it's a little fuzzy. I, I, I don't know what the original looked like. I would have cleaned it up a little, little more if I could have, but it, who knows? It may be all they had, you know? Um, but at least the, even the lettering, like on the rock card, you could tell someone spent some time and, and, and put the, uh, the lettering fresh on there so it's not all grainy looking and stuff like that. Um, same thing with the type on the back cover. I hate when they just scan crap in and just, you could tell it's just crappy scanned type. That's not the case here. I haven't taken the shrink wrap off yet. But this thing comes with a bunch of stuff. So you've got a is your black vinyl I don't know if it's available on color vinyl or not it does have a gigantic poster the album cover it also comes with a little five by I don't know five by seven or something like that promo photo and then uh, 
It's got a 12 by 24 insert with the story of the van, which is really cool. Lyrics and photos. So, I, I dig the Rods. The Rods are one of those bands that they aren't talked about much anymore. Um, but these guys were a big deal back in the day. Um, of course, uh, Carl Kennedy went on to, you know, produce lots of stuff. To produce, matter of fact, one of the albums I'm going to show, he, he produced it. Um, and then um, David Rock Feinstein, who many know as Ronnie James Dio's cousin, is the guitar player behind the band. So nice package. But this next one is really, really nice package, also from High Roller. Now, I already have an original pressing of this, and I probably wouldn't have bought it, but a friend of mine, Jürgen Allman from Germany, a uh, singer for a thrash band called um, Repent, he suggested picking it up, and man, I'm glad I did. This is uh, All For One, one of the greatest New Wave of British Heavy Metal albums ever, in my opinion. Uh, probably a little late for calling it New Wave of British Heavy Metal, because I believe this was like 82 or 83. Um, but... I mean, Raven had been around since 74. This was their third album. Uh, and this was actually the first one where they had brought in a you know, producer and it didn't sound like it was recorded all in one take live. But regardless, it, it's, it's raw, it's manic, it's heavy. Um, and this package is incredible. It is not a gatefold, which is unusual. I kind of, with the amount of stuff in here, you'd think they have a gatefold. But no, it is a, it is a double wide or whatever you call it, sleeve. But the, look at all the stuff that comes in this thing. If I can get it out, that is. All right. And the cover looks great, too, by the way. Someone spent some time cleaning this thing up and making it look the best they could. The back cover photos look as good as the original, so that's impressive. Uh, it comes with a 10-inch inside here. So here's a 10-inch EP, which has Born to be Wild, Inquisitor, uh, Ballad of Marshall Stack, The Power and the Glory, and a live 1983 version of Mind Over Metal. So a nice little EP. Of course, those are all sick, all tracks that release as singles and 12 inch, um, 12 inches back in the day, uh, all in this one nice little 10 inch package. You see Udo and John Gallagher back there screaming, uh, probably singing. In my opinion, the ultimate version of "Born to Be Wild." Not a huge fan of that song, but man, that vibe, that little version that that uh, Raven does with with Udo on here is just manic, incredible. There's also a five by seven photo of. Raven touring for this album with Metallica. Raven were the headliners, Metallica were the opening band at the time. And then it comes with a lyric insert, of course, the usual high roller sheet. And finally, oh, actually, not finally, there's two other things a 12 by 24 inch insert with liner notes, the story of the band, photographs, and then, of course, the 24 by 24 inch poster of the cover uh, and it is on a colored vinyl I believe it's green let's see here yeah it's green not sure why it's green the album colors are red black and red and black and white so but whatever <laughs> I was I wasn't really looking for any specific color so great package great album um, any metal head head should have at least that Raven album in their collection if not at least the first three uh, Rock Until You Drop being one of my all-time favorite albums. So. Okay, this next album, this was the album I was speaking of that was produced by Carl Kennedy. And this too was a pickup my daughter found at Walmart of all places. But this is the um, the vinyl reissue, gateful reissue of the first Anthrax, Fistful of Metal. Uh, nothing too special about it other than the fact that it's remastered and you can see the covers. It's slightly different than the the, the uh, original cover. The original cover has a pink Anthrax logo, not a red one. And this has a gatefold. But the gatefold's nothing special. I mean, honestly, they should have spent a little more time on this gatefold. And, um, maybe had all this stuff and, and then put some photos on the other side. Because, yeah, that's just really lacking. Um, either that or they should have just went as a single release, single, you know, sleeve. Um, and it's on a... Um, a silver vinyl. Let's see how all that shows up on there. But you can see it's it's got a, it's got a sheen to it. It is definitely a silvery color. So, yeah, uh, huge fan of the band. I haven't really been picking up all the different reissues of the album, um, but this one was worth picking up. My like I said, it was it wasn't real expensive. It's at Walmart. It is on 180 gram vinyl, so it's nice to have a fresh, clean player copy. Um, no inserts, no posters, nothing cool like that, unfortunately. Uh, had High Roller done it. 
but we're no light to metal. <laughs> we would have included stuff like that, but there wasn't any in this one. So, uh, as you can see, it's a limited edition Walmart exclusive. I always try and peel the uh, the hype stickers off and put them on my sleeves if I can. Didn't work so much on the Jimi Hendrix one; it wouldn't come off. So I ended up just cutting it out and sticking it in the sleeve. All right, next up, what do we got next? Bootleg. This is a bootleg. This is uh... quick on the draw. Aerosmith. I pre-ordered this one because I knew it would be hard to find quickly. Um, so I think I paid under thirty bucks for it. Uh, this is recorded live, 1978, so uh, WBCN uh, FM broadcast, Music Hall, Boston, uh, 28th of March, 1978. Uh, single album, not the entire show, but it does have Walk This Way, Sight for Sore Eyes, Sweet Emotion, Kings and Queens, Chip Away at the Stone, um, Get the Let Out, Get It Up, I Want to Know Why, Trink After One, Draw the Line of Toys in the Attic, so lots of deep cuts on here. Really good recording because it is a radio broadcast. Uh, the band was hitting on all cylinders here. Love the cover art. Uh, it is not the same photo that's on the actual Draw the Line cover. It's a little different. Somebody drew it differently, so... Uh, whatever, anyhow. <laughs> um, it is on a colored vinyl. It's on an orange vinyl, which makes sense because the cover is orange. Uh, it does have a custom center label. Unlike the Motorhead bootleg I showed earlier. So, yeah, great set. If you're an Aerosmith fanatic, especially if you like the 70s stuff, this thing's well worth picking up. Uh, I, like I said, I pre-ordered this thing. Um, so glad I, glad I finally arrived. I pre-ordered it months ago. So it's, it's out there now. Okay, next up. Getting totally away from the hard rock and metal stuff, this is uh, definitely a lighter shade of, of rock. So I wouldn't call this hard rock at all. Just straight up rock and roll, a bit proggy. But this is the first live album from the Gormo and Key. This would have been about 1980, 81, somewhere in that area. Uh, they had three albums prior to this one, and, and this pretty much contains songs from all three of those first uh, studio albums. And then it's got a couple of tracks that are new to this live album. Uh, double album set. It is a gatefold. This is an original pressing, and it's not a reissue. I don't know that it's ever been reissued. Um, it needs to get a CD reissue. I know a lot of people, when they think of DeGarmo Key, they tend to think of the mid-80s um, and the 90s stuff. They had a lot of hits. They were kind of a more of a, a pop rock band. Um, sometimes they remind me of stuff like, you know, Hall & Oates or um, Billy Joel, that kind of thing. Um, not that that's bad. It's just, you know, they're just not hard rock or metal like I usually show. But those first couple albums are much more organic, less poppy, uh, almost proggy. Uh, sometimes they remind me a bit of Steely Dan that kind of sound uh, and that's kind of what you get here on this this album here it's not heavy at all but it's a really good um, live progressive rock album from uh, let's see what we got it says here 89 minutes of live with six new songs special price of 10.99 can you imagine paying 10.99 for a double album these days <laughs> Ten, double albums these days new ones are more like 50, 40 or 50 bucks uh, anyhow the Garmo Key, no turning, no turning back live. Uh, really cool. I honestly, this is a band that I didn't really get into until just recently um, when I picked up their first few albums. Uh, I did some artwork for them, and I just started really getting into them, and especially this album. I just happen to have the CD sitting here, but this is the Garmo Key straight on. This album is fantastic. If you like, you know, '70s prog light stuff, uh, you know, like I said. Uh, Steely Dan or maybe even Saga and that kind of sound very organic you know lots of uh, electric and acoustic guitars and organs and keyboards all kind of mixed together that's what this is and it's really really well done so the Garmo Key straight on and no turning back live alright getting back into the metal <laughs> the, the non-metal didn't last long did it this is Grave Digger Tunes of War this is on Jolly Rogers Records um, Steve Boldin and I both hopped on this one as soon as it came out uh, because these Gravedigger reissues seem to be in high demand and they disappear quickly. Um, Tunes of Wacken, live album, really well done, really good. So we got Scotland United, The Dark of the Sun, The Reaper, The Round Table, Excalibur, Circle of the Witches, The Ballad of Mary, Queen of the Sword, it's Queen of the Score, sorry, um, Lionheart, uh, Morgan Le Fay, that font's really hard to read. If, you wonder why I'm stumbling over this. Knights of the Cross, Rebellion, and uh, Heavy Metal Breakdown. 
title track of their first album. It is a single album. Um, I believe it's, I can't remember what color it is. It might be black. Oh, it is a color. So we got an opaque blue color here. Two LP set, but like I said, it is a single. It's a LP sleeve. It, there's no, it's not a gatefold, which is unfortunate, but regardless, it is one of those, you know, double ones, so it fits them both in there fine. Uh, nice reproduction of the cover and the back cover. Everything looks clean. There's no, you know, pixelizing or bit mapping or any of that kind of crazy stuff you see on reissues these days sometimes. So, Dolly Rogers did a great job on that. Tunes of Wacken, Gravedigger, uh, German power metal band. This is great. This is uh, Hard Rock from Canada. This is Pat Travers' band. Um, this is April 30th, 1981. One of my earliest concert experiences um, was seeing Pat Travers opening for Aerosmith at the Spectrum in 1983. So this was just before, you know, a couple years before I got to see him. Um, but fantastic live album. Um, single album set. It's uh, hooked on music. You can't... Uh, Your Love Can't Be Right, Life in London, Get in Beta, Crash and Burn, Stevie, and Boom Boom, Out Go the Lights. Uh, the band at this point was uh, Sandy Gennaro, Mars Crawling, and Pat Th uh, Travers. Great recording, too. Stanley Theater, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and it is on a opaque yellow vinyl. Uh, more records. The last two are kind of related, and then there's this Japanese pressing, Ted Nugent Free For All. You all know my obsession with Nugent, been obsessed with him since he was a, literally a kid in grade school, met him a few times, uh, so I'm always looking for Nugent stuff. And I uh, picked this one up on Rockage Room, it was, wasn't real expensive, it is an original pressing, it is fairly clean, there's a few little teeny spots on it, but man, this it's just nice to see, I don't know why all these Japanese presses are just so clean, the album sounds perfect, I mean just not a, not a pop on it, so it is a gatefold, it does have the... Uh, the Japanese lyrics insert in, in it. If I can get it out of this sleeve. Here it is. So there's the, the gatefold, which is the exact same gatefold as the, um, the US pressing. Um, it does have this nice little insert in it. Picture of the band. The actual Ted Nugent band. So you've got... Uh, Rob Grange, Cliff Davies, and uh, Derek St. Holmes. Of course, we lost um, Cliff Davies several years ago. You see, it's kind of a, got all the lyrics there and, and bio information. Of course, I can't read a word of it. It's all in Japanese. But it does have some English lyrics as well. And it does have one of those poly sleeves, but as you can see, it's got the actual CBS Sony label on it, so it must have been how it came out. Um, which is nice, so very cool. Ken Nugent, free for all. And then two more. Like I said, both these are related. King's X related. This is Super Shine. This one here, not only is it King's X related, but it's also trouble related. Because you've got Doug Pinnock, uh, bass player, vocalist for King's X, who also plays bass and sings on this one. And then you've got the guitar player from uh, Trouble, Bruce Franklin. And this is just fantastic. Doomy, stoner, I don't know, it's pretty unique. Now, you're seeing a ton of glare. First of all, I've got the plastic one here. I haven't taken the plastic off yet, because i got to see if I can get the sticker off. But it's also printed on a silver mylar paper, so it's really, really shiny. <laughs> so, um, it comes with uh, this little booklet. With a bit of the story of, the, of, of how everything you know happened and photos of the the guys and whatnot nice little insert I dig that kind of stuff I, I think it makes the release special uh, and then it's got the black with white splatter and uh, the songs are you can see the songs are listed on the center label there in the back it's just got little dots on it like space so uh, I, I love this album, and I missed out on this when it first came out. It sold out really quickly. It was on the Spark label. Um, so when I found a copy on eBay for a, a basically the same price as they were selling it for when it was pre-selling, I jumped on it quick. 
Um, and yep, glad to have it. Super Shine, Bruce Franklin, Doug Pinnock. Really, really good stuff. If you like, I mean, it, it might sound you know silly or trite to say, but it really is a mashup of King's X and Trouble. And then finally, brand new release, brand new for this year, brand new Doug Pinnock. This is his new set, new uh, solo album, Joy Bomb. I pre-ordered this as well, direct from uh, Rat Pack Records. Ordered the autographed copy. I thought it was going to be autographed with a cover. It was not. Here's the cover. Instead, they sent us this, I don't know, 10 by 10, 11 by 11, somewhere in that area, um, insert that is autographed in Sharpie by Doug. Still cool. Nice to have a little extra stuff. I did already take this one out, and you can see it's got a, uh, it's got an OB slip and a really fancy uh, pipe sticker on it. And if I'm not mistaken, it is on a Coke bottle, um, kind of a tannish, opaque, no, excuse me, not opaque, translucent vinyl. Now, it's pretty, um, what I'm looking for, experimental. But I really, really enjoyed this. I've listened to this thing. I've only had it for a couple of weeks, and I, like I said, I've been out of town quite a bit. Despite all that, I've listened to this thing like four or five times, and it's really, really enjoyable. Um, I, I just, I, I must just be a King's X fanatic because I tend to like almost anything these guys put out. So, um, Doug Pinnock, uh, Love the Joy Bomb. You want to call it Love Bomb? Joy Bomb, great album, brand new for 2021, and that is it for my vinyl update. I promise I'll get more videos done. It's, Sorry for the long delay. Uh, lots of stuff to come, though. Appreciate y'all watching. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you think of any of these things. I'm sure I screwed up something somewhere, and you guys let me know. <laughs> and that's it. God bless. Stay strong.